Welcome to our lecture online and here's another interesting example of how we work out a problem using an adiabatic expansion. Now here I have drawn before you what I would call a pressure cooker. We're cooking some food, it's at high pressure, let's say we don't know what the pressure is. And at some point when you're done cooking the food inside the pressure cooker you want to let the steam out. You take the cap off, the steam comes off and Let's say that the steam, when it escapes, it has a temperature of 120 degrees centigrade, 393 Kelvin, and then expands out uh, very rapidly. And that rapid expansion of the steam is what we call an adiabatic expansion. And so since the gas then expands, it does work. And since it's adiabatic, it doesn't receive any heat from the environment. So the, the work done uh, to expand the gas, it needs that energy that comes from within the gas, and therefore it cools the steam down. When I was a kid, I used to jump through the steam when my grandparents cooked vegetables or potatoes in the, in the pressure cooker and they'd take the, steam off, the cap off and steam was coming out, they used to put it outside and I used to run through and jump over the pot and jump through the steam and I would never get burned. And of course, I didn't understand why at the time, but now we can calculate why we would not get burned by that steam. All right. How do we find the final temperature? Well, we need to use one of these equations and probably this one right here looks like it's the proper equation to use because it relates the temperature and volume uh, from um, in an adiabatic process. So if I want to solve for T2, I can then say that T2 is equal to T1 uh, times the ratio of V1 divided by V2, V1 divided by V2 raised to the gamma minus 1 power. And of course the steam coming out, um, that's uh, primarily water vapor. Um, so maybe we should use the gamma for water vapor as a triatomic molecule. So remember that C sub V for a triatomic molecule is 7 over 2R and C sub P is equal to 9 over 2R. And so gamma would be equal to the ratio of C sub P divided by C sub V, which in this case is 9 over 2R divided by 7 over 2R. And so the R's cancel out, the 2's cancel out, that's 9 over 7. And let's see, that's I think 1.28 if I'm not mistaken. Close enough, 1.28, there we go. All right. Now, plugging that in, we get uh, T2, final temperature is equal to the initial temperature we set was 393 Kelvin, times the ratio of the initial volume to the final volume. And of course, initially, the gas is compressed, it's a small volume, finally it's expanded, so it's a 1 to 5 ratio in our example, and then the gamma would be 1.28 um, minus 1. So that would be equal to 393, and I should of course put the Kelvin down, times 1 over 5 raised to the 0 0.28 power, and with a calculator we should be able to figure that out. So 0.2 raised to the 0 0.28 power, and then we multiply times uh, 393 equals, and it looks like that the temperature would be 250 Kelvin. And actually, if uh, my assumption was correct that it went to five times the original volume, which of course is just a pure guess on my account, uh, the temperature of the gas uh, at that point with 250 Kelvin would actually be ice cold at that point. It would almost be little icicles coming at you. So I probably didn't quite get the ratio correct, but at least the way we do the problem is definitely straightforward and correct. So that is how you find the final temperature of an adiabatic expansion it would be a lot colder. Again, if you want to put that on a PV diagram, so here's pressure, here's volume. Notice the isotherms would kind of run like this. An adiabatic expansion would start from a high temperature like this and then go down to a lower temperature like this. At a rapid cooling, this is state one, this is state two, and you can see how you cross isotherms, meaning that the gas would become considerably cooler. The gas does positive work because the process goes from left to right, so there's positive area underneath that curve, and so the gas does work uh, by expanding out of the pressure cooker. All right, that's how you do that problem.